couldn't get her to understand the signal. <laughs> Let's do page 10.
Hallelujah. So one of these days, hallelujah, all of those things are going to come to pass. Everything in God's Word says that will come to pass, Kevin, will come to pass. Amen. Amen. It is written. It is written. It written surely it. is. And if you missed our revival, you truly missed something because I tell you what, if the teaching was absolutely marvelous every night. It truly was. Sister Phyllis really done a wonderful, wonderful job all three nights in the Word of God. And, you know, um, some people, they, of course, they, would, they wouldn't go along with it. They wouldn't believe that we're free, that we, uh, you know, we're bound up, you know, we in tradition and a lot of a lot of churches that and we came out of uh, the traditions you know we didn't wear necklaces we didn't wear earrings we didn't wear slacks we didn't you know but if we go back to the days of, of jesus they all wore robes you know they all your brother can you get a robe on <laughs> amen i'm glad jesus set me free one day amen. hallelujah god is so good he's good what did you say, Mom? Say, these guys will all have a rose. Amen. Amen. I don't know what we'll be wearing when we get up there, but whatever it is, it's going to be wonderful. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to take a prayer request at this time. Uh, like sister Georgiana and Brother Tim are doing some work for her sister this evening that they had to get it done. The, the floor, their water heater went out, and the uh, man's supposed to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning to put a new water heater in, and the floor was rotten. So Brother Tim's uh, replacing the floor this evening for uh, Sister Georgia and Sister. So remember them. Sister Lisa's working late uh, in the she funeral did. business. It's either feast or famine. And, well, the people dying to get in there. Yes, they are. They're dying to get in there. Yeah. <laughs> I know in the paper I saw two tonight. Every night there's been one or two at, at their funeral home. And so she just she called and at about five o'clock. She said, "Mom, I'm." I'm Got to work late. She said, I'll be there when I can. But she said, I, I got, you know, I need the R. So anyway, remember her in prayer. Someone else have a uh, brother, Tony. Yeah, he's in Mary. Um, a lady across the hall from her died today. And really shook her up. Oh, amen. That's nothing uncommon yeah, in, uh, in a funeral, in a nursing home. Who's a mortal? Brother Ken. Yes. Uh, you know, we always go out there on Wednesdays the same, and uh, some woman, young girl, was about 18 or 19 years old, went to the North Kevin Administrator and Administrator and told them that we can't sing the mics anymore. And all the patients like to sing out there. And let's just pray that God can live in. Amen. Amen. Let's remember that. Sister Monica. Yes, amen. Uh, I got some people who I love to have the cases, and that I'm supposed to ask them to go to the house to get an address to where they can send a card. Well, that young boy. That lived in the Morgan house that came with him sometime. He He's the one that told us. He's the one that told us about it. He's one that told us about it. No, I, we, don't have his, we don't have his address or anything, but I'm sure he probably Everybody loves Brother Howard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Brother Kevin. Yes, first of all, I'd like to uh, pray for the Lord, but I just, I just want to thank the Lord for, for that. renewing that feeling that the Holy Ghost inside of me during the revival. Thank God. You know what? I've just been on this on this new new high for, <laughs> for a few since days. Sunday, you know. <laughs> and uh, uh, I guess now I've got an arguing spirit in me. I need to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, Jesus said we could go oh, in and out. Yeah. So you can come to a point where you can go in and out whenever you want to. You can go in and they can't every time you want to. Amen. It's available to you. Amen. Now we can't live in there day and night, of course. We have to come back to the real world. Not live in the flesh, don't we? But you can go in and out yeah. and find pasture in the Bible. Yeah. Hallelujah. I, uh, things, is, uh, things, things are, things are, uh, You're on the back it's a nice right experience. And then, and then I want to pray for Jax there in the picture. Have you heard anything about him? You know what? We ha I have, you know, and I just, 
I just, uh, uh, one of them deals where no interest did it, you know, so uh, they haven't, uh, they was just in there, you know, of course, just buying a car, so, um, uh, that, I mean, that's how I found out about it, but, uh, and then, uh, want to uh, uh, pray for uh, El May. Putting up with you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to pray that if we, you know, you want her on your side. We need to be, we need to be united in in one accord, you know. Amen. Brother Bob. Oh yeah. Remember yeah, Brother Bob. Brother Bob. Remember Brother Bob. I said his heart rate was like now about forty. Forty. So anyway, I remember him. I didn't know anything about talk. We got the church and Bobby was asking me. I said, Lisa didn't, didn't mention it to me. But anyway, let's remember him and lift him up before the Lord. Sister Bobby. Remember David. Amen. Amen. Sister Caroline. Remember all my children and grandchildren. And I have praise tonight. And my grandson, Daniel, the one stays with us. He's been to a girl. Mamma, I'll be home tonight. Or he'll tell me, you know, if he comes back hard, I'm going to do this or that. And I said, I'll never go away and I'll call us and go to him. And he's 25 and he's 26. He's very awesome. Yeah, but he's doing real good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I pray. It's not going to be good. Good, bro. Sister Janice. <laughs> Sister Judy. Uh, remember Becky Swingo and Steve Swingo. Uh, I talked to her at St. lot today, and she told me God is working in Steve's life, and she does not hear that door going in, that death door going in his Steve Moore, and they're going to a new doctor because that one doctor said there's nothing they could do, so they're going to a different doctor. So the Lord is working in that situation. Amen. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. No, you had a great question. Uh, Connie. She just got four wheels and feet up, and she's in pain, and 
Your people look into your Father and believe in it, expect it. Hallelujah. Just your hand in the land of the living. We need you more every day than we do, Father. You know the needs. You are the needs called here. And all the needs, financial, physical, spiritual. Oh, God, you know the things we have to go through just to get through the days. Amen. We know we're in a terrible time. But God, you can bless right in the middle of all of this. And help us to just demand it. Just reach for it. Go for it. Amen. Lift you up in praise and glory and honor. For it's good to be a child of God. It's good to be saved in the midst of a wicked and a generation of God. Hallelujah. Bless the churches everywhere and the people of God. Amen. The weak and the struggling. Bless our children and grandchildren. Those who pertain to us, O oh Father. I must be mindful of it. I must be a witness to those around us we deal with every day. I must be a light that men might see hope, oh, amen, somehow in this day and time. Bless those that don't have any hope today, Father. For the truth is, hope, as long as there's you, there is a hope. We believe it and we'll stand upon that. And we'll declare it, amen, hallelujah, before the world. Just have your way and help us, Lord God, to be what we ought to be. Amen. To serve you and to spread this great gospel. Amen. We thank you for it. And most of all, keep this love between us, oh God, that you put there. We thank you for it. We know it comes down from the throne of heaven. Hallelujah. It's not a man, but it's agape. It's the love of God. We thank you for it, Lord. We know it when we feel it. Nothing in this world quite like it. We thank you for it tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Does the church say amen? amen. amen. God is a good God. Yes, he yes. Truly, He's worthy to be praised. Amen. I uh, just want to mention oh. Sunday nights to start our revival with uh, Brother Mike Baldock. It'll be Sunday through Thursday. Invite somebody out and that they might hear the Word of God and worship with us. You never know who might get saved. Amen. You know, they, they won't come unless you ask. So just invite somebody to come out and be a part of it. Also, just be thinking about our walkathon. Uh, we haven't announced it, but we're going to announce it Sunday, and we'll have our our uh, sign-up sheets. Our walkathon, we have it every year, and that is to help pay our real estate taxes. We don't take exemptions like a lot of people do. A lot of churches don't don't pay real estate taxes, but we've always been believed that that everybody else has to pay it. Why shouldn't the church? And so we um, do that walkathon every year, and that helps pay our real estate taxes. And this year we got two churches that we, <laughs> this one and that one over across the street that we have to pay taxes on. So um, just take and uh, remember that and be thinking about it. That's some sponsors. If you can't walk, you can sponsor somebody. And we walk for 10 miles. And Sister Shayla, God love her, she always does it and does a wonderful job getting sponsors. I'm so proud of her. For years she's, she's walked that to her 10 miles. Sometimes it's a struggle isn't it? Uh, that last couple of miles. <laughs> laps around that track is a little bit hard. But but it'll bless you. It really truly will bless you. Brother Kenny always brings his, his golf cart out and uh, they follow him around in case somebody needs to be picked up. And boys hey, 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 dump a little water on him. <laughs> And yeah, that's Angie, right? Dad gets her practice. One of these days she's going to get her license. Sister Lisa's been letting her drive some. And uh, she did real good Sunday. She took me home on Sunday. But she did real good. She didn't do it. Sister Janice. Where does this take place? We have it at the fairgrounds. And that way, uh, we used to walk to the power plant years ago. We walked 11 miles. We'd walk out there and walk back, but the traffic got so bad, and we tried the forest street, and traffic was bad out there with the curves and stuff, so we decided the last few years we've been doing the fairgrounds, and it works out real good, and um, we have water and everything that, uh, so, you know, somebody needs water, so it works out real, real good, so even if you can't walk it, 
you can sponsor somebody or help someone get some sponsors. I'll tell you what, most people will sponsor. I've, I've sponsored <coughs> churches all over. But somebody comes to me and says, I need you to do a sponsor. I, I'll put 10 bucks or whatever. And most people will. Amen. And out there at the fairgrounds, the, the good part about it is you can walk at your own pace. Yes. Whereas when, yes. when I remember when I was growing up, we walked to the power plant and back, and Tony went with us a few times. You, you, everybody had to walk the same pace. Yeah. So you either had to keep up with the fast person or slow down to the slow person. Jennifer, keep up with Jennifer, Jennifer, you're done good. Yeah. Jennifer can just take off and leave it. She walks fast. Jennifer yeah, walks so fast. everybody kind of walks at their own pace and they get done at their own time and you don't have now, to it worry. It was hard because of the traffic and everything and we always had civil defense or somebody following behind us, but yeah, or someone at least with flashers on, yeah. but it was, it was, the traffic had got so bad out there, but yeah, but yeah it was nice in a way because there was some shade every once yeah. in a while walking in. Or yeah, we always did that in the summer, in late summer, so yeah. it's still pretty warm. Yeah, so it, you know, September usually is a pretty good time to, it's where it's not too often <laughs> not, but anyway. I believe that we said it was the 14th. I think it's the 14th, uh, the 14th. second Saturday of September. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. It's a good time in fellowship and singing and praising God. So it's always a real good time that we have. to eat them donuts before they start walking. That ain't good. Yeah, we did have donuts last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we brought them donuts. I don't, I don't remember. I don't know you, but maybe they brought the donuts or Gary. Some Gatorade and donuts. <laughs> but anyway, that's just some thoughts that I thought that I uh, wanted to mention. That Sunday morning we will have our uh, pledge sheet, so you you'll have a you know a good uh, deal of time to be working on getting your pledges and stuff. And they don't have to pay right then; it's just after you get done walking, or they can pay to start with. Either way, as long as you keep track of it. So God's good. So Bobby, you got a song going? No, I'm choking on candy. You're choking on candy. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, some of them, what's going to say, it's a good amount. You said that last night, though. Yeah. It's very loud. There's a place. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
to those whose lives touch yours and mine. The hands that serve us every day, should we not help them while we stay? They are so kind that none can guess how soon they'll cease our lives to bless. The hearts that love us, who may know how soon the long, long way must go? Then might we not their faults forgive or, and make them happy while they live? So many faults in life there are, we need not go to seek them far. But time is short, and you and I might let the little faults go by and seek what seek for what is true and fine in those whose lives touch yours and mine. This seems to me the better way. Then why not think begin today?
And uh, they always bring a bunch of black folks down. We had a great time with them. And I knew this was not due. I knew it was not due to hear from him. And uh, he called me and said, uh, the leader of the choir wants to bring the choir down. Well, the choir to fill this place. <laughs> Let's go down and play. going to bring them all. You know, but we'll bring a pretty good busy down here. And I said, well, that'd be great. And he said, well, I'll have to get back with you and uh, let you know a, a, a time. Because I got to I gotta double check with her on her schedule. And never have heard another word from her. And I tried to call him a couple times to have him get a hold of him. So he's a busy man. He's 75 years old, and you wouldn't know he's 50. I mean, the guy is just so active that he's just always on the ball for Jesus, you know. And uh, I met him years and I worked for Chevrolet, and he worked with my brother Phil, and that's how I got to know him. And so we've been friends for many, many years, and what a great man of God. So I was holding these other people back because I want to make sure I'm. I didn't book a time when Brother Fudge might be able to be here. <clears throat> I finally I realized I can't have all these people one time. I gotta get this, gotta get these people in here. And so we kind of jumbled some of them together. And I know it's been a lot, it's been an inconvenience to those who work jobs and have to get up early and, and all that. It is hard. But uh, but God will give you the strength and he'll he'll cause good things to come your way. Yeah. We thank you for your faithfulness, we thank you for your giving. And uh, turned out to be a blessing. I'm concerned about Phyllis whether she's going to get any offerings or not. And she actually did pretty good. And we went for her for it. She was happy about everything. And did some great teaching. And we got to hear from the Lord. And that's, as they say, that's the mainest thing. Amen. Amen. To, to hear from God. And uh, I thought about all the uh, the uh, teaching went forth here. <coughs> in evangelistic manner. She she does a lot of teaching sometimes, but she does it in evangelism. And that's very unusual. Uh, generally, evangelists come on track mind, and that's just when it shows, and that's what that's all about. That's, what, that's their business. Uh, and uh, we have need to be taught. A lot of times the reason we don't get any further than we do because we don't know what we're doing. And uh, there was a man one time reading the book of Isaiah, and the prophet asked him, understandest thou what thou readest? He said, how can I, except some man teach me? Yeah. And see, this is God's plan, for somebody to teach you. And in order to teach you, you've got to be teachable. You have to be accessible. You have to be willing to sit down and, and, uh, and be taught. And a lot of times you won't agree with everything that's taught. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, he said, work out with your own salvation, fear and trembling, and you've got to write and I've never said under anybody there isn't some things. And I generally say when we have a, a ministry, and look, we'll straighten out the curves after they're gone. Don't, don't worry about it. It's, it's like eating good uh, fish. I love freshwater fish. And I can't, uh, I can't uh, uh, play them like a lot of these guys can. Raymond does it good. Raymond does really, really good. Yeah, he does. I have to wait through them and then dig the bones out, you know. But I managed to get it done. I can get him eat anyhow. Even if I can't play him, I can get him eat. <laughs> but he knows I can clean a platter pretty quick. <laughs> I love freshwater fish a lot better than saltwater fish. I just do. I'd rather have a bunch of sunfish or crawfish or something like that. And uh, there's nothing any better. Uh, but you got you got to pull them bones out. And you can't just just throw the fish away because of the bones. Yep. And that's the way it is in this in this gospel truth. As the word comes forth, it comes through flesh. And that's the bones. It comes through sometimes tradition. It comes through uh, how people have been raised and their thought processes. And, and that can change over time. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. I've changed my thinking on lots of things in the last 20 years. It's just amazing. The changes that I have made, that I had to for my own salvation. Say, I just, I just couldn't understand killing people and talking about the love of God. Now you, you may not think I'm, I'm kidding you, but I was in a prayer service one time, and when they were all having prayer for some people that were out of order with the church a little bit, and they were actually in the altar, and I'm here, I hear that, I heard this. Kill them, Lord. Kill them, Lord. Stop them. Why 
whatever it takes. I just had to get up and walk out. But that's the type of atmosphere I lived in. I had to escape that. I had to get out of that because that spirit was in our church. It's a sad situation, but that's how radical you can become. You can't do that. You've got to live and let live. And everybody only going to agree with you. You might well forget that. They're not all going to agree with you. But all you can do is put forth the truth as you see it. And then you judge it. You take it. Take what you can. Now don't throw it all away because there's something you don't agree with. No. See, I learned that at an early age. There's a lot of preachers, I said them, that really, I don't know if I need to waste the time to do it now. Because I just listen to a lot of hogwash. And there's tradition of men. And the Bible said about a time that you would preach traditions of men and, and call it the gospel. Preach for commandments, I think he said. Preach for commandments the traditions of men. You can do that. But just because you think it, you could be wrong. Believe me, I found out I was wrong in lots of things. And I had to back up. And nobody likes to do that. Everybody likes to think they're right. Especially if they found what they consider to be the truth. When they really were in darkness and they find some truth, now all of a sudden it's not careful. Everything's true to them, just about. And uh, you've got to rightly divide the word of truth. And when this word comes through, it's according to what spirit comes in. It's according to what the tradition is behind it. And you have to weigh all that out. But he gave you the Holy Ghost. He said he will teach you all things. Amen. And if you listen to that wee small voice, it'll tell you. And he'll say, that, that's not of God. You don't have to accept that. Now, then he said to me, that don't mean you got to kill the preacher or run the preacher off. Because he, he can't get straightened around, straightened out again. Stick with him for a while. Yeah. And I don't know a preacher that had preached over a, a period of many years as went through metamorphosis to where they've grown in grace and knowledge of the Lord. Amen. And that's what it's all about. We, we try this word. He said, try me and see. We try this word. We put it to work in our life. And we try to make it work. And then if it's not working properly, then we have to check ourselves. <clears throat> right? As sister. And she did a lot of teaching along those lines. And it was very, very good. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, start reading here. I, I, didn't, even, I didn't even realize it just... I went to the Word. Uh, the seventh chapter, I'm going to start with the 13th verse. And just kind of put a little icing on this. To maybe bring a little understanding to your heart. Because I know it's confusing to a young saint trying to find their way and make their way. You should begin to wonder who is, who is right. You know, though Scott Bailey had in that song, Lord, open my eyes and help me see the light of your love. Open my eyes and show me the way to the heavens above. I go, yours is the way I need and the way I see to make it through. Help me, O oh Lord my God, for I need you. And, and unfortunately this comes through people and so we can take what we can take the other way through over our shoulder. Take what we can take I don't agree with that. Well, you have a right not to agree with that. Right? You don't have to please me. You have to please God. Amen. We're not asking you to line up to some preacher. If you line up to the Word of God, you'll be fine. As I believe that with all my heart, He will guide you into all truth. And if you're an error in some ways, He'll show you where you're an error. If you'll stay with Him. Says so, there, enter ye in at the straight gate. The straight gate. There is a way that's straight. Now in this, in the, uh, I preached upon this out to me one time. This is S-T-R-A-I-T. It's not S-T-R-E-I-G-H-T. That's a, that's, a, that's a straight line. But a straight gate, 
A street is a waterway. Hello, God. <laughs> you mean I love God? I hang up on what God. Here you have the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to uh, destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. There's a lot of people on the broad way. And there's every kind of a way. If you don't like this way, you look around, you can find you another way. In fact, there's an old scripture that says, stand in the ways. I believe it's Jeremiah, about the third chapter or somewhere along in it. I mean sixth chapter. I can't remember. As I get old, I recall. But it's in my heart, I know. Enter ye in the straight gate. It says, stand in the ways and see where is the good way. There's a good way and it'll prove out to be true to you. You find out soon enough it's straight or not. When I be hear people standing or praying for somebody, for them to come in the, in, in the submission, and they say, kill them, Lord. I mean, that knocks the wind out of me. That do not really hit me in the belly. Well, that's not the spirit this thing is supposed to be done. Amen. Yeah. We were conceived in love. Yeah. Yeah. We were drawn to God. I know that's what drew me with the love of God. Exactly. That's, the, that's the driving force. When a church loses its love, you're in trouble. And you better have numbers. I don't need anything. Just get, got a lot of people with the wrong spirit. And some of them probably with me would like love to have the right spirit, but they're not strong enough to fight against the people that don't. I'm going to tell you, it's tough to get past the pastor. Because he's, he's in charge. You got a pastor that's out of order, it's tough. Well, they're in charge. And you go against them, you're out of order. First thing they tell you, out of order. I got told that a lot. Come up in the church. Because I just didn't see things the way other people saw them. God dealt with me in different ways. And finally I began to realize I had to line up to, to the Word of God and to, to God Himself. Said, so looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He was a man that went about doing good. He's a man that, that said, bless him and curse not. He's a man that said, forgive. How many times it, it takes to be forgiven? Forgive. So we got to enter in at the straight gate. It's wide. Wide is that gate. And Lord is the way that leads to destruction. And many of their be which go there at. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Understand that. I want to tell you, in every great church, I don't care how many, how big the church is, what the numbers are, there's a handful holding the whole thing together. There are some people come to a church that can hide out there. They don't have any responsibility. And the church got enough money coming in, they're not going to close down. They're, they're going to go, and you can go there, never give them a dime, they'll not even miss it. They can take a little old church, they'll miss dying. <laughs> these, these, they miss it. You find out you come to church, if you can carry a tune any way in the world and some can't carry a tune, we'll have you saying it. Because you're going to do something. We're going to get you doing something. We have you praying for somebody, we'll have you doing something. And God wants everybody to do something. And everybody can do something. Sometimes people come to me and say, Brother Pat, is it all right if I do this or that or the other? And I said, well, tell me what it is. Is it a good thing? Is it a good thing? Oh, yeah. It's a good thing. I said, I guarantee it's good. If it's good, do it. Want to come ask my permission if they can go do a good deed for somebody. <laughs> If it's good, do it. It's going to do good. It's going to go throughout the body. It's going to become known. It's going to be 
realize that God is moving. Look what God's doing here. Look what He's doing there. And that's what will happen in a body like that. There will be good, good things following those that serve God. He said, well, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. For in with you they are ravening wolves. There's people that like to control people. It's in their makeup. They just do. They like to control people. And some people are easy controlled. It's the hardest thing in the world for a person that's easy to control to break free from bondage. It's hard. I watched Jennifer go through it. When Jennifer, uh, when I heard Jennifer wasn't going to church, and what actually happened, God began to reveal some things to her and began to show her some truths. That's what God will do. And you begin to realize you're kind of spinning your wheels. Uh, it's what they call getting nowhere fast. I'm doing all these things and nothing's happening. Now let me tell you something. As the brother over was talking about, you cannot give God. If you give it, it shall be given to you. But that's not something you do trying to get something. That's what that's the thing was trying to say to the kid. But there are people. I had a man say to me one time, he said, there's a lady in, in, in uh, not too far from your church. If you go see her, she'd come to your church. And I said, well, who is this lady? Well, let me tell you, she's got a lot of money. And she's a good giver, and she'll, uh, you, she'd do your church some good. But right now, it turned me off. Because I don't go after people for the money. Some of you have been coming around here a long time. Who have I ever asked for any money? I mean, on a personal level. No. But God will cause me to bring things to you. He'll cause it to be done for you. I talked to the brother. Uh, I'm running back here about the grass. And he was asking about it. I said, well, Brother Randy's is going to get with you. He's going to talk to you. Well, he told me to uh, go ahead and I said, well, that's fine. That's what we're looking at. But he didn't say how much. How much? I said, well, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I said, we ain't got a whole lot. I treat not to be to say anything to you. He said, well, I'll tell you what. What if I get a basket of food every week? I'll mow it on the weekend and pick up my food on Tuesday. Ah, oh, sounds like a good price. We get a hand of and we have to buy the food. But you see, if you wait upon the Lord, He'll do things for you, won't it? I can jump in and say, I'll give you thirty or forty dollars a week. I'm struggling right now to get my own grass mold right now for <laughs> you know. And uh, a lot of times people they'll volunteer things and then you end up doing them. I treat a lot of times like I didn't see people walking home to too many things because I end up generally end up doing it for them. And, and don't get me wrong, they don't have it all the time. It does happen. Uh, they'll start a project. They're going to do this, they're going to do that, or do the other. And it's, it's kind of fun for a while, and all of a sudden it becomes a work. And so, in Daisy, we got stuck one time cleaning the church, we cleaning it all the time. Well, I just couldn't do it now. I just couldn't. Physically, I can't do it. We try. We work at it. We do whatever it takes to get it done. That's, that's, that's our commitment. But uh, if you, uh, <laughs> Sister Marilyn Carroll, sister, in her whole other church over there, she said, Brother Patch, I've been <coughs> looking up at them cobwebs around that light. A long time. And uh, she made me know this top was from it. Like, yes, sir, they are. I said, see, to me, the Lord's dealing with you about that. <laughs> she had been cleaning church for about two years. <laughs> and I didn't tell her. <laughs> but that's 
Sasha, sing like a lost kid. What are you about, Dad? Let me hear what you play you, you know? <laughs> if something's a good thing to do, just do it. God's going to bless you. If you give it to the Lord, He'll give you more to give. Amen. Hmm? He'll give you more to give. If you give it to the Lord, He'll give you more to give. So we're not expecting that out of you, Kevin. We do it because we love Him. Amen. We love the Gospel. We love the truth. And we're willing to do whatever we have to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you shall know them by their fruits. I, I've, uh, I've seen a lot of problems. I've seen people come through a problem. Now one situation one time where this prophet, this uh, was Bill Schwab's daughter, little, uh, what's her name? Marsha. She used to come to, come to church. But she, uh, this, this prophet, and the lady's name was Davis. She had a good name. I don't know what happened to her. <laughs> but she kept telling her, <laughs> kept telling her she's going to have a baby. Well, many people speaking, I mean, I mean, she must have done to her. She, they said she couldn't have children. I, I know God, he, he gave a virgin a baby one time. He can do what he wants to. But in the normal course of things, that doesn't happen. But this one wasn't happening to tell her that once. From time to time, Marsha would run into her. And she'd tell her again, you're going to have this baby. And one night, she came to our church and Marsha came to her. That's the lady that prophesied I was going to have a baby. I didn't say anything to her. But next thing I know, she had her in the corner and she said, don't worry, I think about it. You're going to have this baby. And in the first place, of all the people in the United States that didn't need a baby, is probably Marsha. I mean, all she could do to deal with life. And she was a good girl. I'm not, I'm not saying anything about her. She did the best she could. I think as a Christian, I think we'll see her in heaven. I really do. Sweet girl. Love God was baptized many times. <laughs> I mean, out of her own mouth. I've been baptized in the church of town. I, I let, they ought to get you there. I just, <laughs> I don't know. But she did the best she knew how to do. Amen. And she was a good person. She was always nice to me. But I used to get so put out at some of those problems. Throw those things out there. So easy to say that. God's going to do this. God's going to do that. And people come to me and say, now you know something, you're just not telling me. God, I don't know nothing. I know God's able to do anything. Make him millionaire if he wants to. I wouldn't hold a breath. Yeah, I get a job, so i make some money first. Because <laughs> in the normal course of things, it's not going to happen. But it can't happen. And God can do anything. Now, I don't tell you there's not such a thing as miracles. God does them. He does big ones. He does little ones. He, he does them all around. But you see, you have to understand. You have to have spiritual understanding to know that everything that men say is not necessarily of God. You have to work it out for yourself. And He will help you to do that. He'll help you find what really is true. You shall know them by the fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? I've said this before. You can go pick, try to pick some cherries off an apple tree. You'll be waiting a long, long time. That thing don't have cherries. It has apples. That's like an apple tree. <laughs> you wish all you want to, and that's still... If God wanted to do a miracle, He can do it. I have no doubt. He can do it. But I'm not going to stand up and tell you, bro, I'm going to the gospel. I'm going to put some cherries where the apples are. We have this, this thing that was given by God. It's eternal. It comes straight down from the throne of glory. 
It's called agape. It's such a perfect love that they didn't even have a word to, to describe it in the Bible. So charity is close as they could come. Thought they just call it charity because it was a, it's a giving love. It's a giving love. You didn't have a name good enough for it. So you just call it charity. But it's a gut pain. It's the kind of love that caused Jesus to go all the way to the cross, knowing exactly where he was going, knowing exactly what he was going to suffer, knowing what he was going to go through. But he determined in his heart he was going to do the will of the Father. Well, I personally am glad he did. And I have actually stood and cried. And so, Lord, I'm sorry that you went through what you went through. But I'm so thankful you did. I wouldn't have had a prayer. I wouldn't have had a chance if you hadn't done that for me. And quite honestly, I wouldn't even have done it for myself. That's the goodness of God. It may take you a long time to come to that understanding. But I'm glad I understand what I'm telling you. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Now here's what I'm I'm, I'm what I was going to say to you. All these things that she told us this week and how to make this thing operate, how to make it work in our personal life. And that was her message. And a lot of people, you don't hear them teach that type of thing. They just say, do it. You ever have somebody say, how? They don't know how. They don't know how. They're not spiritual. They don't know how to do hardly anything. How? And then you ever try to tell somebody how? It's hard to tell somebody how. How did you get the experience and the understanding that you have? Well, I don't know. It took a lot of falling down and getting back up. It took some determination. As Sister Betty used to say, it takes glee, guts, and glue. Got to have some glee. <coughs> you got to have some guts. And you got to have some stick to it this. I don't care what the devil tries, he can't stop me. I don't care what people say, they can't hurt me. That's the mindset you have to get. Someone come and told me what some people were saying about me, and I said, It's a shame that people that got a, such a wonderful guy here, they never get to know him. They just love me and just. Just realize what a great, great guy I am, and they're just depriving themselves of my fellowship. <laughs> but I'll tell you why. I'm a pretty good guy. I ain't a bad guy. And I want you to know this. I I don't condemn myself anymore. There was a time I couldn't be good enough. I couldn't feel good enough. I wasn't sure I was good enough. Now, I'm not better than you are. I'm not better than anybody else. But I'm good enough for God. Amen. And He's proved that to me. And that's what counts. That's all I care about. I'm sorry about if you don't think that, then I believe it with all my heart. He's my Father. Amen. I feel His grace. I feel His love every time I get up. I feel it all over me. I feel His grace. His love. His mercy. He makes a way. Where there seemed to be no way. Amen. I went to see my cardiologist the other day. A doctor had pulled a stupid trick on me. And I let it happen. Sometimes we let these things happen. You know, I uh, was first operated on. My uh, surgeon told me, he said, you know, I, I had your hand, your heart in my hand. And he said, it's a beautiful little heart. Real pain, and just tell me all about it. And he said, You don't smoke, do you? I said, No. I said, I quit when I was 19 years old, or 20 years old. He said, uh, You can tell it. That's what saved you right there. Once you know that, that's what saved you. But he said, I don't pour a heart. He said, It's a muscle, you know. And he been working double time all these years because it, it, uh, it couldn't pump the 
fluids out fast enough. And so he was working double time. And it's all out of shape. It's oversized. If you got an enlarged heart, but it's really a good looking heart. Now he said, I believe if we work with this thing, we can get this halfway back to normal. I won't promise you how much. So I had to go see him every six months and he worked with my medicine, worked with my medicine, until finally, uh, it was after two years, I guess. He said, well, I got some good news for you. I said, no, he said, you won't have to come back and see me again. Your heart is almost back to normal. And so what happened is your heart got so muscled out from working so hard that it was just hard like a muscle. And said, you squeeze real good. But when they go to release, there's muscle down. And it released so slow that it couldn't clear the water out, out of the heart. And, and so you had congestive heart failure all these years. You should have been dead a long time ago. And I said, I played basketball. I, I run track. Yeah, I said, a lot of athletes just fell over dead. And they said, well, they had a heart murmur or something like that. They didn't understand a lot of things that we understand today. Well, it's been just not... Uh, when Brother... Uh, little John... Uh, Graham, J.D., John Douglas Graham, worked my heart and got it to work in real normal. He uh, kept cutting my time down in visits, six months, and then even, even to a year. And when he'd see me, he'd say, well, whatever you're doing, just keep on doing it. You're just excellent, everything's fine. Didn't have a bit of problem. And so after uh, some period, they put me some little flaky doctor out there my family doctor. And he kept telling me, he said, I don't understand why you're taking two of these medicines that are like, and it's actually, it's carbidolol, or is that what you said or not? One of them was 12.525, and the little bitty, little bitty thing, it was like a grape seed. But anyway, he said, I'm going to just take you off of that. Well, a red flag went up, and I should have called my cardiologist right then. I didn't do it. Went on a little longer, and he said, I don't think you need this carpet alone at all. So he just took me off the other one. Well, needless to say, it wasn't very many months till I was in the hospital again with this heart problem. And when he found out what I was taking, and why are you not on this card bill? He said, that's the thing that causes your heart to soften up and, and do right. He was ready to go and that guy up and beat him up. And he's got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he was mad. It took, it took me two years to get that or, or to be. I didn't think I was, He said, in fact, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I told everybody, if that boy dies, it will not be a heart attack. It will be of something else. So he told me, so I'm going to work with it again. And immediately, he, he doubled my carbidolol. He started doing some drastic things. And uh, this was over a, about a two-month period. So I went and it, uh, into his office last week. He said, well, I want you to know something. Your heart is just about back to where it was in the beginning. And whatever you do, if these doctors try to change some of this stuff, and I'll tell you what, he was making these changes, they tried to change it out to nursing home. Yeah, they, they tried to change it. Now, I just wouldn't change it. I'm not doing it. I said, he just put me on this because he said, this is what I need. But see, you, 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 you think, well, they're supposed to know the doctors. And most of them mean well, their intentions are good. But there's good doctors and there's not so good doctors. There's some smart doctors and there's some really dumb doctors. Practicing medicine. 
and you are the guinea pig after practicing on it. So I learned a great lesson through that. And I'm feeling better and I'm, I'm getting where I can do a few things and life is worth living again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I learned a great lesson. You listen. Take it in. Try it in your heart. Go to the Word. Verify it in the Word. And then you decide which path you want to take. That's the only way you can make this thing, folks. I know people that they don't like where they're going, but they're scared to death to leave. Some kind of big monster is going to get them. They're afraid. Actually afraid. And I've told that story many times about when I went out to the, when the, the uh, uh, this junkie wanted to play my record on the air and he set up at the state, at the county fair. Good Lord, we didn't go to fairs. Carnivals or anything like that. Oh, no. And I remember walking on that fairgrounds and there was a big black cloud over me. Overshadowed me. He got to know I was just going to get jumped on. And when I did that interview on the radio with Dr. K, he was in the home room at school. Had a good time, incidentally. Take that, Del. Anything of that. And I remember when I walked over that prayer, I said, Now, just what was wrong with that? Well, it's a gospel song. It's getting played on the radio all over. But I've been made to feel guilty. Well, I didn't do just exactly what they thought I ought to do. I know people went out of town to go to a movie. I don't do that no more. When you go to a movie, I go. Very few of them I want to go to anymore. So that's trash. That's the truth. There's no cause someone bad told me to do. I follow the leading of the Lord. And oh, when the, when the uh, Ten Commandments was playing. Oh, I wanted to go see that so bad. And I told Sister Betty, you ain't got no business down there with them sinners. Oh, I want to see that so bad. I was ready to put on a Barack Obama mask and go in somewhere. <laughs> well, <laughs> no one Barack. He wasn't. He wasn't around in days. But I did go down there, and I sat on that front row, and I was scared to death the whole time I was there. I just kept waiting on something to come through the sky and blow me up. <laughs> Boom! It didn't happen. And when I look back on that movie now. It is so tame, it is so bland, it is so, I mean, it's just nothing. And there's definitely nothing there to be condemned. I give you kind of an idea of what it was all about. It just wasn't nothing. Go to the church. The one that you saved to get off down there to that drive in. Just controlling people. Controlling people. Amen. Well, I'm glad I got set free from all that. Thank you, Jesus. And I don't go everywhere when I can't. That spirit within me won't let me. No, you don't need to deal with that. You got enough problems in life getting messed up with that. I don't touch everything everybody else touches. I don't do things up. There's a whole thing that's wrong with that. And, and the Bible said, if a man esteemeth anything to be sin, to him it is sin. Amen. But it may not be to me at all. I'm not laughing at this, but I don't see anything wrong with that. <coughs> well, I don't see anything wrong with it. Ain't no need you trying to condemn the other. I might agree with you, just make you feel good and go up and sneak off and do it. <laughs> That's what they did a lot back in our day. Go out of town. 
Go see a movie in an app somewhere. And you know how that is? Sure as a word, you run into your neighbor over there. Or somebody you go to church with, that'd be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's the atmosphere that I was raised up in. Well, us Sister Phyllis was trying to teach us, if we can put these precepts to work in our personal life, things will happen. And when they, and I mean just happen. Listen, I've been in the will of God to, to such an extent. I mean, Daisy just mentioned somebody that we hadn't seen in months and months, and next day we meet them in the store somewhere. I wonder what happened to so-and-so. Lord, I'd love to see them and talk to them about the Lord and look up and there they are. Now you can call that coincidence if you want to. I don't believe that. And, and uh, you want to see somebody saved. Well, I remember, I never won't forget, Sister Valerie invited a girl that she worked with at Harmon Motive. And she came and Valerie wasn't here that night. Is it a revival? She came home and got the Holy Ghost got, got baptized. And Valerie had been witnessing to her for weeks and weeks and months and months. You know what the first question the girl asked me where was? Where's Valerie? I'd say, I don't know. She knew where she should have been, if, if possible. Now don't get me wrong, I know there's time we can. I'm not stupid. I know there's time, especially in this day and time to live in, people working all kinds of shifts, going all kinds of different directions. It's even different than it was back in those days. But just sure as the world, if you're not careful, you get the witness and real good, you stay home in church and you'll find out the next day they got saved. There's not a greater joy in your life and the witness to somebody, and let them know what God's done for you, and make them understand that He'll do the same for them, and then to look up and they come in the door, and you can't believe it, and the next day they're coming to an altar of prayer, and you can't believe it. They say, you know, they're going to the waters of baptism. Wow! And it was so easy. God can cause things just to come together. See, when he said, let us make man in our own image. I want you to know something. He wasn't talking to nobody. Because he said, there was none with me when I created the heavens and the earth. I alone laid the foundation of the earth. But he was taking to, talking to all the aspects of what makes him a man. All those things. He brought them together. He brought them together to make man. All the attributes, the nature, your nature, all the other thing about you, God brought it together. And that's what he was talking to. He said, let us make man. Hey, here we are now. Let's, let's make man. And I believe he just spoke it. I don't think he even had to even do anything at all. He just spoke it. And all these things just come together. You know, it's beautiful when things just come together. Folks, we'll work and work and work and work to try to get something done. And if we can just get together, we can just think it and ask it and watch it come to pass. Can you believe that? I wouldn't have believed that. I told a story about Ralph Beeson, a guy I worked with, lift truck driver. Always had a big chew at the back in his mouth. Foul talking, beer guzzling guy. Now I invited him to church. Every time we had a revival, I invited him to church. Some of the back of my mind, not really believing he's going to go, but I, I asked him anyhow. I witnessed to him. I sing to him. Put my arm around him. I said, You know, Jesus loves you. I mean, I know he hates him coming. But one night in a revival, he came in. I couldn't believe it. There he is. He came in and he sat down. Sit beside me, down right beside me. Oh, I was going to be on my best behavior that night. I'd you the first guy up. 
Jeremy danced around the church a couple times. I had a lot of giggles back in them days. But I was sitting there, I didn't want to didn't want to show off, you know. He leaned over to me and, he, and uh, of course the Holy Ghost filled people begin to dance and shout and things begin to happen. And he leaned over to me and he said, what's the matter with you? Ain't you saying? <laughs> he knew it was Pentecostal. I only acted Pentecostal. He clapped his hands more than I did. I was a little bit embarrassed by him. Just being honest with you. Then at, at the end of the service, the preacher had a prayer line. Who do you think was the first guy in the prayer line? You are. Absolutely. Came down there, they laid their hands on him, and he began to jerk and jump and jerk and jump, and he danced all over that church. That foul talking individual, I didn't think would even ever do anything like that. See, you don't know. When God comes on the scene, it's easy. So all these times that I was talking to him, <coughs> he was working in his heart. When he's alone in his room, when he's alone, probably sitting on a bar stool. Lord speaking to him, you know, you know you ought to, you ought to get free from this. See? When we get this thing done in our soul, It'll work. And we can just stand and watch it work. I mean, it's easy. We make things way too hard. Brother Kevin said that uh, he got moved on Sunday night. Well, I dare say he offered himself Sunday night. He can do that almost every night if he wants to. Because it's in there. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. That jumping, hopping, hollering, dancing thing was in you. It's been in all this time. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Amen. And many of you here, and all the worst one is, I'm not worthy. We talked uh, a lot about that. We've been talking about that a lot the last few weeks. And we try to make you to understand there's never been one worthy. You wasn't worthy for him to die for. It's not, it has nothing to do with our worthiness. Because it's written. It's written. And we can enter, go in and out, find pasture. We can go in and out and find pasture. Folks, that's the only thing that's going to get us through this life. Can you understand that? If you don't get in, get dead. If you don't get them cows home, you know, they're going to die out there. I told about that boy that was lost on, the, on, the, on his farm. True story. The man told us a true story. The sun was sinking low, getting dark. All of a sudden, everything looked the same. His way, he turned. And he realized he didn't know which way to go. He was out there and he knew he, he lived not too far, but he didn't know how to get back there. He didn't know what he was going to do. He's beginning to get scared now. <laughs> then all of a sudden he heard a rustle in the, in the bushes. Here come old Bossy. She knew the way home. So he took out after the cow. Now you can imagine that. He took out after that cow. He said, the cow went up the hill. I went crawling up the hill. The cow went across the creek. I went across the creek. Cow went through the briar patch. Guess who went through the briar patch? Never so I leave in the light when I looked up and saw in the moonlight the outline of that barn come into view. Oh, he said, I was bruised, I was bloody, I was tired, I was soaking wet. And thank God I was home. I made it home. And that's what it is, children. We're trying to find our way. And God will get us to where he wants us to be. And if we'll follow his precepts, hallelujah. 
I know one, one time me and Dad got we, uh, picking mushrooms and uh, looked up in his dark. And where we went in at was a long ways from where we come out at. We're about Chauncey Downs place. <laughs> this boy came along with a pickup truck. We used to like see him too. He picked us up, took us around to where the car was. But you know, all the time we was praising God. Yeah, the Lord knows. He knows where we're at, oh God, we're just going to head out here, Lord, and you're going to get us out here. There was no panic, no nothing. We just believed that God was going to back away, and you know what? He did just exactly that. That's what, that's what you got this thing in there. That's what you got the Holy Ghost for. To teach you and to guide you and to lead you. And He'll bring things together. He'll make it happen. If you do what you're supposed to do, Amen. He'll honor that. And He'll get us through. We had a lot of great teaching this week, folks. Some of the best that I've heard in a long, long time. Saw. And you know how that sister goes? If I can tell you some of the tragedy that she's had in her life. You would wait. You'd wonder how she kept going. But she never stopped. She's pushed right on. Pushed right on. And the blessing of the Lord is resting upon her. And she can't share her struggles, her weakness, her highs and lows and all that. And that will be that way until Jesus comes. But that thing that's in you, it will work for you. If you put it to work. And take it into your heart. I can old cow too and it's good. She talked about the other night. After what you cough it back up and chew a while longer on it. <laughs> and you'll learn what is right and what is wrong. For yourself. And you won't worry so much about what other people's. Well, I hope, I hope they'll work theirs out. I'll pray for them. I got, I got to worry about this guy here. If I can get him saved and sanctified, amen, God will work in my life. Amen. That's the main thing. I hope I didn't bore you tonight, but that's, it's just been in my heart today thinking about all the great teaching that we got. And I know it goes right over the top of our head, we're not careful. But it's the most important part that all of the shouting that we do. The Bible said, with all thy getting, get understanding. How do you get it? By dealing with it. By fighting against it. By fighting against yourself. By bringing yourself under subjection. By making yourself do what you don't want to do. I know there's some people that say, well, we shouldn't have this many revivals right here. Well, yeah, praise the Lord. You're probably right. It's probably mostly my fault. But just suck it up, do the best you can. And you know what? God will bless us. Oh, we went six week about. I'm not, I myself preached six week Bible twice. And we, a two week revival, you could count on it. We have a revival that's two weeks. You can't only get through a week now. Me, we want me, we want. You know, and they get a meat and they choke on the meat. And they say, What's some cotton candy? Cotton candy. Chocolate, ice cream. Party Christians. Chocolate. Chocolate. I love you, children. That's thank you, Miss Service. Tell somebody about Jesus this week, isn't it? Invite someone to Sunday school. Yeah. We need to get our numbers back up. God is good. He's able. Lord, we love you. Thank you for the word. We thank you for truth. Oh, God, we know the truth will work. Bless us, we pray, in our weakness. Even make us strong. Use us for your glory. Bless all those in need in this church. Whatever it might be, oh, God. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. I mean, by the way, Sunday night, Brother Zach is supposed to get baptized or everything goes right.
is uh, is uh, 